So it's with great pleasure that I'm going to um, ask Ria Evelyn to speak now on behalf of the Revolutionary Communist Group. She'll be speaking for about 15 minutes and we will move straight on from speaker to speaker with discussion coming at the end. Thank you very much, Ria. Thank you, Kat. Um, so yeah, this meeting is called Latin America 2021 Resistance and Revolution. And in this introduction, I'm gonna contextualize that title within the framework of the capitalist crisis and growing inter-imperialist rivalries. From the wars of independence from European colonialism to the US asserting its dominance over the region with the Monroe Doctrine in 1823, from the revolutionary movement in the first half of the 20th century to the blood-soaked Operation Condor and neoliberalist shock doctrines in the 70s and 80s, Latin America has been characterized by colonial and imperial domination, which has prompted resistance and revolution. The 1970s saw neoliberal measures such as deregulation, privatization, slashing of state spending imposed on the people of Latin America, forcing them to pay for the deepening capitalist crisis of accumulation. Institutions like the IMF, the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank entrapped countries in these cycles of debt to ensure the continuation of imperialist plunder and the extraction of surplus value with organisations like the OAS, the Organisation of American States, working to destabilise any opposition to US domination. The result from this was rampant political corruption, rising crime and huge levels of poverty. In the 1980s, 48.3% of people in Latin America were living in poverty. And this all went alongside brutal repression against any resistance to US domination. But then in the late 1990s and the early 2000s, the catastrophic impacts from this bred resistance in several hotspots across the continent. Hugo Chavez's electoral win in 1998 in Venezuela, followed by the alliance with socialist Cuba in the early 2000s, was then followed by this wave of left-wing nationalist and social democratic governments sweeping into power in Chile, Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, Bolivia, Nicaragua and Ecuador. These new governments favoured social programmes and regional integration while demanding sovereignty and greater control over the continent's vast natural resources. The increasing turn to the left across the continent heralded a new era in Latin America, which has been referred to as the Pink Tide. The legacy of first European colonialism and then US dominated imperialist neoliberalism has left so many of these Latin American countries dependent on extracting natural resources and selling them for below world market prices. For example, in Venezuela and Ecuador, their economies have been developed to be reliant on the um, extraction and then cheap exportation of oil. In Chile is copper, in Bolivia is oil and precious metals. Due to systematic underdevelopment of chains of production, most consumer goods they have to import. So these countries are selling their resources at below world market prices and then importing commodities at world market prices, resulting in this completely unequal relationship with the more developed capitalist and imperialist countries. But under these left and social democratic governments, the revenues from the export of natural resources was increasingly taken out of foreign hands and that money was channeled instead into healthcare, education and social welfare. By 2009, nearly two thirds of Latin Americans lived under some form of left leaning government. This shift represented a beacon of anti-imperialism and it put socialism back on the agenda globally. The gains were also really important for relieving socialist Cuba of its isolation. 
there were big differences between the governments in each of these countries, with some of them committing to building a socialism for the 21st century, like in Venezuela, Bolivia, Ecuador, and others electing center-left social democratic governments that were less opposed to US imperialism, like in Chile and Brazil. Challenges remained in all of these countries. Important sections of the economy, the banks, food production and distribution, the media, they remained in private hands. And in many cases, the structures of the police and the army that were built up under military dictatorships over the past century, they were left intact. The bourgeoisie waged wars of destabilization, trying to undermine the successes of these left-leaning governments. But on a global scale, the wins in Latin America were hugely important for the fight against imperialism um, because they weakened the position of the US in somewhere that it had long considered to be its backyard and offered an alternative to US domination through regional cooperation. In 2004, Cuba and Venezuela launched ALBA, the Bolivarian Alliance for Latin America, um, an important political project where oil, goods and services were exchanged at below market prices for healthcare provision and other development initiatives. By 2009, 10 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean had joined this alliance. Unfortunately, the 2008 global economic crash severely impacted the success of the pink tide countries. Because they were largely based on extractive commodities, the 2012 peak and then the 2014 crash in oil prices indicated what was to shortly follow for other extractive commodities. Economies collapsed, which undermined the progress of the left and allowed the influence of the right to gain traction. Just one year after that 2008 global recession, we saw the US-backed coup in Honduras remove the social democratic president Zelaya. Honduras had been the latest member to join ALBA and the coup government quickly broke off that alliance. What followed the 2009 coup in Honduras was a decade of bloody repression against social activists, journalists, environmentalists, as the US-backed right-wing forces across the continent in efforts to reassert its hegemony over the region. The biggest challenge to US hegemony comes from China. In 2018, for the first time, trade between Latin America and China overtook trade between Latin America and the US. And in 2019, more than $223 billion in trade took place between Latin America and China um, compared to US trade of 198 billion. And this is happening at a time when US imperialism is in relative decline. So desperate to retain its position, US intervention in Latin America once again escalated through the Obama and then the Trump administrations through a regime of sanctions and destabilization and military expansion. In Argentina in 2010, the right was elected into power. In Brazil in 2016, the Workers' Party president Dilma Rousseff was impeached on spurious allegations of criminal misconduct, giving rise to the far right. In Ecuador in 2017, Lenin Moreno was elected as president on a ticket of continuing to build the citizens' revolution, started under former president Rafael Correa, but he soon betrayed the Ecuadorian people and aligned with US imperialism. In Chile in 2018, the conservative billionaire Piñera was re-elected. The US under Trump then ramped up that pressure even more in November 2018, declaring war on socialism in Latin America, with Cuba, Venezuela and Nicaragua um, declared this troika of tyranny. This came during a protracted coup attempt in Nicaragua 
um, from the violent US supported Tranque street barricades that resulted in hundreds of deaths. Then a few months later in January 2019, the latest round of coup attempts began with the US puppet Juan Guaido declaring himself president. Then in April 2019, the US tightened the screw on Cuba with the application of the vicious Helms-Burton Title III. Um, a few months after that, in November 2019, we saw the violent fascist US-backed coup in Bolivia overthrow Evo Morales and the movement towards socialism. As the capitalist crisis deepens and inter-imperialist rivalries between the US and the EU intensify, there's a greater push from European capital to make gains in Latin America. The imperialist British state has played a key role in trying to preserve Latin America as a bastion for imperialist exploitation. So the British state backs Guaido, it funds regime change operations in Venezuela while withholding $1.3 billion of Venezuela's gold. The British state gave its support to the racist coup government in Bolivia and it allows the illegal US blockade on Cuba to operate here extraterritorially. <laughs> So by 2019, the right wing resurgence had made significant gains and things were not looking good for Latin America until this new round of resistance emerged, beginning with the student led protests in Chile in October 2019, which have forced a rewriting of the Pinochet era constitution. In Colombia, we've seen renewed resistance to the right-wing government that has been pushing ahead with brutal attacks on the working class and campesinos. In Bolivia, poor and indigenous masses relentlessly organized street mobilizations to successfully get rid of the coup government and return the movement towards socialism to power in the October elections last year. In Peru in November, street-based protests exploded among young people against the ruling political class. In Ecuador, the indigenous-led October 2019 uprising against the right-wing administration's collaboration with the IMF transpired into an election victory last month for the left-wing candidate Luis Arreuz, who goes on to the second round of elections. Despite several coup attempts, intensifying genocidal economic sanctions, a ramping up of terrorist attacks, including attempts being made on President Maduro's life, the Bolivarian revolution in Venezuela survives. The socialist revolution in Cuba has defied imperialism's rampant exploitation for over 60 years and has outlasted yet another US administration. The coronavirus pandemic exemplifies the stark choice that is facing Latin America, and that is people or profit, socialism or imperialist barbarism. Socialist Cuba's centralized state and its free, universal, community-based healthcare system has meant less than 350 people have died from the virus. Despite the genocidal US blockade blocking their access to vital life-saving medical equipment, they've developed multiple vaccine candidates and the Henry Reeve Brigade from Cuba has sent assistance to COVID hit countries all over the globe. In comparison, under the fascist coup government in Bolivia, the healthcare system collapsed. In Ecuador, after years of healthcare cuts under Moreno, bodies were literally piling up in the middle of the street. In Brazil, Bolsonaro denied the existence of the virus and his failed policies allowed for a mutant variation to spread unchecked throughout the population. And in all three of these countries, the Cuban doctors serving their poorest communities were forced out. In Peru and Colombia, um, they have among the highest death rates in the world with tens of thousands of people dead. 
Now, in the wake of COVID, economists warn that Latin America is heading towards a debt crisis even worse than in the 1980s. And who is going to be forced to pay for that? It's either going to be the rich or it's going to be the poor. The coronavirus pandemic has intensified the capitalist crisis and those people living in countries systematically underdeveloped by imperialism will feel the harshest impacts of that first. The only solution is to fight for socialism. We in Britain have an urgent duty to step up our internationalist solidarity with the anti-imperialist resistance and the struggle for socialism in Latin America, as well as in Britain. This solidarity has to be practical, uncompromising and reach out to wider forces in Britain who are willing to challenge the imperialist system. And that is exactly what we in the Revolutionary Communist Group do. So we say end the blockade of Cuba, hands off Venezuela, victory to the popular resistance in Chile, Ecuador, Peru, victory to the mass in Bolivia, end the dirty war in Colombia. Hasta la victoria siempre. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ria. Comrades, might, if they can't, if they haven't got their, can't with their audio, might want to show their appreciation with this little, exactly so, with a little sea of hands applauding. Thank you very much, Ria, that was great. Um, we're going to move, as I say, we're going to move on swiftly from speaker to speaker with questions being taken at the end. Um, after that broad and sweeping socialist overview of the continent, we're going to move very specifically to uh, Colombia and to Jacqueline Castillo, who's, a, I think, a founding member of MAFAPO, the Association of Mothers of the Colombian False Positive, the murdered civilians passed off by the regime as guerrilla fighters, killed in bat battle during the savage repression um, of uh, liberation fighters, uh, particularly under the Uribe government. And these more than 5,000 brutal acts of murder, as we know, resulted often in promotion for the military, in uh, extra money for the military. Uh, and it's a particular, uh, in, a, in a whole shameful history, it's a particularly shameful episode. Jacqueline is going to speak um, and Jonathan is going to say a few words and translate and will there'll be some images and some pictures of the struggle for justice that they're involved in at the moment. Please welcome Jacqueline. Many thanks for inviting us. So I'm just going to give 20 seconds intro. Um, like uh, the speaker before me is playing well, there is a long history of intervention in Colombia. In the 1948 Bogota riots, the CIA was already operating there all the way through the Civil War. Then 1951, the US Special Survey, survey Team. 1964, the Lasso Plan. In 1994, the CIA declared declassify a, a, a program of extrajudicial killings, which is what Jacqueline is going to speak about. But bear in mind that in Colombia's history of brutality, there are many, many modalities of extrajudicial killings. The ones she is going to speak about are called false positives. And that is because in military jargon, a positive is someone killed in combat. So a false positive is someone who was never killed in combat, but made to look like he was. So this is one of the many varieties of extrajudicial killings that uh, take place in Colombia. And um, in 1999, we have Plan Colombia, which was uh, 5 billion pounds by the US government, uh, which um, with the excuse of the war on drugs and the excuse of ending the civil war, drugs were not obviously drugs, <laughs> plenty of drugs in Colombia still. <laughs> and, uh, and the civil war did not end, um, but um, uh, and all these atrocities are well known to the world. And um, this was, by the way, this was drafted by Clinton and sponsored by Biden, Joe Biden, the, who is now president of the US. And only a couple of months ago, he was very proud of his role in Colombia about uh, how he helped set up Plan Colombia. But also the UK. UK is very responsible. They got their dirty hands. Their hands are full of blood. Uh, you have uh, in the UK, we had here uh, a few years ago, Hilberto Torres, a trade unionist from the Oil Workers Union, who works for a subsidiary of British Petroleum in Colombia, who was kidnapped by paramilitary gangs who uh, claimed to receive money from BP. 
And uh, this is well documented as well, that they, from the 1980s, the British state is, uh, trained uh, special death squads in Colombia, the special services. And um, there is a long history by Spain, the European Union, etc. So um, I'm going to introduce you to Jackie Lynch. She'll speak for a couple of, of sentences, then I will translate. Um, but bear in mind, Jacqueline is a very humble woman. She doesn't like blowing her own trumpet. So I'm gonna blow it for her. What you're going to hear now is not a, just a helpless victim, but a fighter, which is what inspired us all. What is inspiring about these mothers and inspires people like me who are far away from Colombia now and inspire people all over the world. It's not that they are helpless fighters who take it all, but that for 13 years, they've been fighting the Colombian state uh, that includes the army generals directly, that includes the bureaucracy, that includes the media, the state media, and etc. So uh, let me introduce you to Jacqueline. Jacqueline, it's tu turno. Dale. Muchas gracias. Buenas tardes y buenas noches en algunos lugares. Good eh, evening, good afternoon. Gracias por este espacio. Many thanks for the inviting me. Mi nombre es Jacqueline Castillo, soy la representante legal del colectivo de MAFAP. I am, I am the legal representative of the MAFAPO Collective. My name is Jacqueline Castillo. Primero, pues contarles eh, qué fueron los falsos positivos. Just want to tell you what false positives were. Eh, los mal llamados falsos positivos. The so-called false positives. Fue una práctica que se destapó en el año 2008, cuando jóvenes empezaron a, des a desaparecer. This, this was discovered in 2008, after the disappearance of certain uh, uh, youth, they started to disappear. Bajo falsas promesas de trabajo. And their fake promises of, of, of works, they were lured and their fake promises of, of work. Y posteriormente aparecieron como guerrilleros dados de baja en combate. And later on they were found as guerrilla fighters found uh, killed in combat. Eh, sabemos que fue una práctica sistemática. We know it was a systematic practice. Que se incrementó. That, that increased, intensified. Cuando el expresidente Álvaro Uribe Vélez hizo un ofrecimiento during, during uh, President Uribe's uh, uh, policies. Que de acuerdo a los resultados que el ejército diera, iban a tener unos beneficios. Policy of offering rewards to the army according to number of killings. Como era ascensos, medallas, vacaciones y dinero. Such as promotions, uh, medals, uh, holidays and money. De esta manera eh, aumentaron las desapariciones de los jóvenes. This is how the, uh, the disappearance of the youth increase. Porque pues ya en lo largo de estos 13 años de trabajo. In these 13 years of, of, of work. Han confirmado los militares que han dado versión. Those military who have uh, confessed. Have que confirmed. ellos eran, que ellos eran calificados de acuerdo a las bajas that they were measured according to the number of kills. Había presión por las bajas. They, they were pressured to, to report killings. Las bajas era lo más importante. The, the killings were the most important thing. Y las bajas era presentar muertos. Y, y, y oh. casualties, casualties was to show uh, people killed. Cuando desaparecen los jóvenes en Soacha, que fueron 19 jóvenes. When the 19 youth disappear from Soacha, which is uh, a, a place at the north of Bogotá. Es cuando realmente destapa esta situación que vivía Colombia. That is when uh, uh, Colombia discovered this situation. El caso de mi hermano fue en Bogotá. The case of my brother was in Bogotá. Y también apareció en Ocaña Norte de Santander. And he was later found in Santander, which is near Venezuela. Donde aparecieron eh, los jóvenes de Soacha. Next to the older Soacha uh, youth. 
Es, un, es una ciudad que queda a 16 horas de camino en carretera desde Soacha. This is a um, 16 hours journey, car journey from Soacha to Ocaña, where they were found dead. Hemos venido trabajando a través de estos 13 años. During these 13 years, we've been, we've been working. Buscando justicia y verdad. Seeking truth and justice. Garantías de no repetición. And guarantees of no repetition. Y como nuestro mural lo dice. And just like our sign explains, the one that you see the picture there. Queremos saber quién dio la orden. We want to know who gave the order. Eh, Inicialmente con las organizaciones de derechos humanos. Initially we some human rights organizations. Sabíamos que las cifras eran más de 10,000 casos de ejecuciones extrajudiciales. We always knew the numbers were over 10,000 killed. Y no unos casos aislados como se habló en ese momento con los jóvenes and, de Soacha. And not just some isolated cases like they were pretending those days with the Soacha youth. Hoy se ha demostrado este trabajo a través de la JEP. Now, this has been shown uh, through the Peace Court. Que no eran eh, cifras, como decía el expresidente Uribe. That it wasn't just uh, the, the numbers that expresidente Uribe used to claim. Que queríamos dañar su imagen y su buen nombre. He used to claim that we just wanted to damage his good name. Hoy en la Justicia Especial para la Paz se reportan 6,402 casos confirmados. Today in the Peace Tribunal, the Peace Court, uh, uh, there are already confirmed 6,400 cases. Mal llamados falsos positivos. So-called false positives. Tampoco podemos denominarlos ejecuciones extrajudiciales. We won't want to call them extrajudicial executions. Porque en Colombia no existe ningún delito que tenga que ser ejecutada una persona. Because in Colombia there is no uh, crime that you, you could be uh, judicially executed. De esta manera tenemos que hablar de muertes ilegítimamente presentadas como bajas en combate por agentes del Estado. Which is why we have to talk about deaths illegitimately presented as killing combat by the state. State killings, illegitimate state killings. Venimos trabajando con víctimas en otras regiones. We have been working with victims in other areas. Que por temor no se habían atrevido a denunciar. The out of fear did not want to um, denounce. Y querer contarles que con toda seguridad esta cifra se puede doblar. We want to tell you that we, we're very sure that this, this number will easily double. Después de este reporte que pronunció la JEP, After the Peace Tribunal ruling, seguimos recibiendo llamadas de personas que aún no han denunciado. We still getting phone calls from people who have yet to make any uh, 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 denouncement to the authorities. Y personas cuyos casos dicen que quedaron en la justicia penal militar archivados. And all, in, in also other cases that were archived under the military justice system. Así que nuestra gran lucha seguirá siendo para so que is, esto no quede en la impunidad. Our struggle is and will continue to be uh, to make sure that this does not remain in impunity. Y poder demostrar que fueron poder demostrar que fueron hechos reales que son crímenes de Estado. And to show that it were real real facts and they were crimes of the state. Es importante para nosotras todos estos espacios donde podamos seguir visibilizando estos hechos. All these forums, such as these ones, are very important to us, where we can uh, make people aware of this. Muchas gracias. Many thanks. I want to thank both Jonathan for, you know, his extraordinary translation, but particularly, please, can you convey to Jacqueline our appreciation of her very powerful testimony, but also inspiring of turning kind of person, the personal tragedy into political um, organization and drawing in people into struggle. And maybe you could just let her know how much we appreciate that. Jacqueline, dice Kat, que muchas gracias. Están muy motivados, muy inspirados lo que contaste sobre unas mujeres que, que volvieron una tragedia en, en una lucha. 
Thank you very much. If you care, let's get us. Does she got two more minutes? I think she forgot to mention something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, y les quieres, les quieres contar sobre la jornada de las madres de, de al principio confundidas y luego luchadoras. Tienes otros dos minutos más. Muchas gracias. Eh, realmente querer decirles I want to tell you que estas madres eh, de los jóvenes de Soacha that these mothers of Soacha que son eh, en su mayoría personas desplazadas de sus tierras are in, are in the big majority uh, uh, women that had already been displaced from the countryside anyway personas muy humildes de escasos recursos very poor people already con mucho miedo de poder eh, dar de esto a conocer very fearful of, of facing this and you know making this public se han venido fortaleciendo a través del arte de la pedagogía have become stronger through uh, work, uh, sorry, through art, pe pedagogy, work. Haciendo trabajos en universidades, en colegios. Exposing this in universities, in colleges. Plantones. Uh, demonstrations. En, en varias eh, sectores de Bogotá. In several parts of, of Bogotá. Hacemos anualmente la conmemoración de la muerte de estos jóvenes. And once a year, we, we commemorate the killings of these youth. Y poder demostrar hoy en día. Because we want to show today. Su fortalecimiento a través del arte para dar esta lucha. How we be, have become stronger through art and through struggle. Arte como ha sido a través de la costura. We have done a weaving. La pintura. We have demonstrated with paintings. Fuimos enterradas en la tierra. We demonstrate by burying ourselves on, on, on under the earth. Y en este momento se está trabajando tallar la memoria. In this moment we are making a sculpture to, to the memory. Son trabajos que, trabajos que se hacen eh, en madera. Uh, we're, doing a, uh, we're doing also woodwork to, uh, to, to respect the memory donde cada madre eh, talla su historia. Every mother then uh, explains her story in wood. In y venimos wood. trabajando para poder eh, dar a conocer el libro de las madres de Soacha. And also we've been working on the book, book from the mothers of Soacha. Muchas gracias. Many thanks. Thank you very much, Jacqueline and Jonathan. There's, if you look in the chat, there are details of how to follow, how to find out more about Mafapo's fight for justice. There's an interview with Jacqueline that's been listed. There's also Facebook where you can follow and find out more how to support the struggle that they're involved in. So thank you okay. very much indeed. Thank you. We're going to move on. I believe that um, Anna is in the meeting and therefore it's with very great pleasure that I'm going to welcome Anna Maldonado of the Frente Francisco de Miranda uh, in Venezuela, who is uh, it's an organization committed to the building of the Bolivarian revolution uh, from the grassroots, both practically and politically. It finds itself in the front line against uh, imperialist onslaught and its attempts to destroy the Bolivarian revolution. And I think Anna's name will be familiar to many people who go seeking true information about Venezuela beyond the bourgeois imperialist press and have seen her, have seen interviews with her and seen her on, uh, on videos and her defense of Venezuela and what the people collectively are trying to achieve. And I, I say, I believe you're here. I can't see you and I will hand over to you. I, I, I would like to thank everybody, especially my dear professor Helen Jaffe and the other comrades that I met in Cuba two years ago, Samantha and Ria and the other comrades. Uh, it's okay, do you, do you understand me? Okay. Well, um, as Kat have, have said, uh, I belong, I am member of an organization of a Bolivarian social fighters is called Francisco de Miranda Front. Uh, it was created by uh, the for the uh, commanders Fidel and Chavez, and in 2003, 
in Cuba. Uh, after the coup of 2002, the, this organization was created because uh, we need a lot of uh, needs and we have a lot of gap. Um, and well, uh, this was this a uh, great idea of the our these two commanders, Fidel and Chavez. Uh, this week is very important for Bolivarian and for Chavismo in Venezuela because uh, we are in the commemoration of the death of Com Com Commander Chavez uh, eight years ago. He, he passed away, the Commander Chavez, and I, sorry for the delay, I, I came late just because we, we were discussing in a community about this important week. I would like to thank this, this, this opportunity. Um, I would like to share with all of you the, our work is a, a really based community work in every community. Uh, this period in Caracas, the capital of Venezuela, we have 2,600 communities. Uh, are, they are organized in around 110 communes is the highest level of organization in our country. Um, it is organized by diff many diverse movements, social movements, community-based organizations, and also Communal councils that are is is um, organized by different uh, families, and the in the the most important purpose is the building of the socialism. Of course, in in this struggle, uh, we we have to fight, as Che Guevara said, with the, with the old weapons of the capitalism. And we have to create the new one. What is that really distinguish, that really make the difference in this building process of the new um relationship with with uh, uh, how we we can um better organize i don't know if the the commerce have the the one of the the um, um presentation in powerpoint maybe it can be useful um i, I would like to share this experience that uh, we are developing here in, in Caracas as part of the formation uh, system for the cadres, for the community's leadership. Uh, last week, we uh, uh, were working in, in a workshop in, in Caracas and we uh, try to uh, go deep into the all the problems that we have in in this moment of blockade of aggression for the u.s imperialism and in this this uh, uh, a program is a political pedagogy system is called Caracas Insurgent. And I would like to make a link with, the, with this, this meeting because 
uh, we, we say that there is, of course, a resistance, but we need more than or, or just the resistance. We need to build these new, um, the, the, the new ones, the insurgents. And as my comrades from Colombia, uh, that what is about is um, a strategy that is the insur insurgency and that the imperialism and the oligarchy and the elites um, develop uh, over the, the organized people is the counter insurgency, is the elimination of our cadres and our construction and our developing. And well, uh, as, as I say, the, we, we developed this, this, this program and, and is, is, is address for the grassroots militants and members of the people's power. Uh, these are the lines, political education and crystal, critical history, situational and conjuncture analysis, communication, education, and, um, and all the, these uh, peoples of popular education, uh, right? And we, uh, the, the next one, please. In this workshop last, last week, we asked to the people three questions. How is the biggest problem in your community? The second one, it was, what is your experience as part of the communal estate construction? Uh, it could be make a, a social mission, it could be be part of um, recent, recently, all the um, program to um, uh, organize the people for the the COVID, um, and the second, uh, the the third question, it was, uh, what problem you can't resolve in your community, and you. Uh, give elevate to the president and it was amazing uh, it was we work with most of the communes of most of the cadres in the in, in Caracas and many of them uh, identify uh, a problem that is really the, 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 the needs more extend, extended in their communities. About the second question, through all the, their, their personal and collective history, they refer many experience, experiences where, uh, where they have worked uh, building this communal state. And uh, it was a, a surprise about the third questions because we expect that they uh, will give many of their problems to be solved by the president. But we really uh, encounter uh, uh, sounds, something very amazing because most of them uh, answer saying that they won't give any of their problems to the president, to, uh, to uh, any of the uh, ministers of the cabinet of the government. They have um, 
in our capacities to solve and to organize and to solve by the organizations. And at the same time, these problems like a hyperinflation of the attack to the Bolivar, to the economy, they, of course, um, a, a, a have the, the expectation to be solved by the by the uh, national government. I don't know if you, we we can go to the next one. Um, well, um, as as I say, in 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 this, it, we, we can well. Uh, refer many many things about the um, this work with the communities, but that that we really uh, want to express is that we are in a in a um, process of it's a revolutionary process. Of course, we have a lot of contradictions. Most of these contradictions is because. We, we are uh, fighting against the capitalism uh, system and at the same time, um, we, we are in this process of the resistance uh, I, um, trying at the same time to uh, um, uh, like uh, build this unity base of our program, the, the national programs, Simón Bolívar, that is that uh, the assurance of our definitive independence and at the same uh, time to resistance uh, the um, imperialist aggression, especially from this year 2013 when uh, Chavez um, uh, leave us uh, physically, and uh, in in Venezuela we have this this struggle, uh, and the the most important um, thing that I would like to share with you is that is of course in in is is try to convey that. Uh, we we are working, uh, still working. Uh, even we have to face all this this aggression. Uh, by there is a a, a, a great great uh, unity in the very base of our our organized people. Uh, try at the same time to uh, fulfill all the requirements of the democracy, uh, uh, liberal democracy uh, that is re uh, highly valued in in the in the rest of the world. But our real uh, uh, democracy is our our um, proposal. Is a popular one, revolutionary, participative, um, where where the peoples, organized people, um, have have the right. Because in the in the other uh, presentation that I I I, I asked that later, uh, our commerce uh, uh, can share with all of you. We have, we have a lot of uh, low uh, organic law about people's power that have the right to organize, to participate, to uh, really um, empower ourselves to um, uh, build the, the road to uh, the Bolivarian socialism. That is that really the organized communities uh, build their communal 
way to the socialism. And uh, this, this struggle is, is every day in all the aspects of the, of the daily life. Uh, last, last year has been especially difficult um, facing the, the COVID, but still, for example, when capitalism say um, stay home, the, our, our militants, our political party, our leadership of our communes say uh, our, our trencher is, is, the, is the community. Our uh, space of fight is the commune. And uh, we try to make dif the difference to uh, a really uh, save lives, lives as these uh, really meaningful, powerful uh, saying of our uh, comrades from Cuba to save lives and to put the life over the capital. Thank you so much. Again, I'd like you to show, you know, use the reactions and the clap if you can to show your appreciation of what was a fantastically inspiring speech. Thank you very much, Anna. I feel we have so much to learn. You know, I'd like to attend some of these workshops myself. Those of us who are trying to build so a socialist current in this country, I think, can learn so much from the work that the Frente Miranda is doing in um, in Venezuela in the most difficult conditions, of course. So. Thank you very much. And can I use this opportunity to remind people that if you have questions, if you want more um, information, please send your questions to Patrick, who's going to kind of try and put them together and then feed them through to me in the discussion so that we can ask them. And, you know, don't be shy. Or there are no stupid questions. And there are, there's so much that's being raised already by our speakers about what's happening in their countries. So please, um, you know, do send your questions to Patrick. Um, our next speaker is meant to be um, Oli Vargas from Bolivia. He's not arrived yet. He said he was going to be a little bit delayed. We will take him up afterwards. I'm going to move straight on to Jacob Dexter, who's going to be speaking on behalf about, of Rock Around the Blockade, a campaign um, in solidarity with Socialist Cuba set up by the Revolutionary Communist Group that also tries to combine in its own way, practical solidarity with political, ideological work here in this country. So without further ado, Jacob, over to you. Rock Around the Blockade is a British campaign set up in 1995 by the Revolutionary Communist Group. Uh, we campaign in defense of socialist Cuba against the US blockade of Cuba and in solidarity with revolutionary movements throughout Latin America. The campaign was founded at a time when the British state was attempting to stop young people from uh, organizing independently in unregulated parties and, and protests. Meanwhile, the Cuban state, despite being in the middle of the special period of economic crisis after the collapse of the socialist bloc, was attempting to promote youth culture and uh, mobilization. So we saw a stark need for solidarity between peoples and organized our first brigade to Cuba, which we used to circumvent the blockade by taking sound systems and amplifying equipment with us. Uh, since then, we've embarked on 13 further solidarity brigades. <clears throat> Cuba shows us that there's an alternative to poverty, racism, and war. And we use this example to support working class struggles in Britain and to show them that socialism is the only system that can provide for humanity because it puts people and the environment before profits. The necessity for solidarity with Cuba has not diminished since the founding of Rock Around the Blockade. Cuba needs support during the challenging year ahead. But we also need Cuba 
more than ever now to inspire people who have seen the failure and corruption of the capitalist system during the global pandemic, which has seen hundreds of thousands lose their lives unnecessarily. In contrast, in a brilliant demonstration of resilience and the power of socialism, Cuba has been able to use its community-based public healthcare system that prioritizes prevention over cure and has more doctors per person than anywhere else in the world. Doctors that have mobilized to undertake multiple door-to-door -door health checks on the entire population, uh, being part of the reason that there's only just over 300 deaths from the virus on the island. Uh, Cuba's state-funded biopharma sector has allowed it to adapt and develop new drugs for treatment of COVID-19 patients, most recently the uh, Soberano vaccines. Astonishingly, this small Caribbean island has also developed four vaccine candidates, which will be provided to the whole population and will be available for poorer countries who are being left out of imperialist vaccine supplies. In addition, Cuba's Henry Reeve Medical Brigade has sent medical specialists in disease control and disaster response all around the globe. This is despite the genocidal US blockade, which was punitively tightened under the Trump administration, blocking their access to vital life-saving equipment, such as ventilators and vaccines, as well as their access to international finance, trade and resources. Over the course of his presidency, Donald Trump's administration imposed over 240 new measures, sanctions and actions to tighten the world's longest and most punitive economic blockade. It was clearly an attempt to capitalize on the weakened position of Cuba resulting from the coronavirus pandemic. Incrementally since 2019, Cuba's access to food and fuel have been severely impeded and export earnings have been slashed, foreign investors have been scared off. Measures to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic have demanded additional resources. Uh, while the economy was shut down and tourism reven revenues plummeted due to the necessity of closing the borders. Uh, goods shortages have made long, exhausting queues part of life's daily grind, with some Cubans rising at 4 a.m. to stand in line. Uh, poor agricultural production and the pandemic have also exacerbated this scarcity. Uh, in the final months of his term, the Trump administration attempted to place further pressure on the island by restoring Cuba to the list of state sponsors of terrorism, a move designed to obstruct efforts by the Biden administration to improve relations with Cuba, about which Cubans remain hopeful. As a measure against this economic warfare and the damage dealt by the pandemic, the Cuban state has moved forward with a process called uh, monetary ordering, which involves currency and exchange rate unification, price adjustments, and a reduction of state subsidies to enterprises. These processes were accompanied by significant raises in uh, salaries, pensions, and social assistance benefits. Probably the most significant of these changes was the unification of Cuba's dual currency system, which was introduced in 1994 when Cuba was experiencing the economic hardship following the collapse of the Soviet Union. These are difficult times for the Cuban revolution, to say the least. Even if the Biden administration lifts some of the sanctions and uh, the country's efforts to struggle against the COVID pandemic continue to succeed, this year could be another tough one for Cuba. But in spite of that, there are lots of reasons to remain optimistic. And the Cuban revolution has proven throughout its history that it will not back down in the face of imperialist aggression. And we know Cuba's not alone not just because there are so many people here today, um, but that Cuba maintains its dedication to internationalism. Uh, in the face of a brutal campaign of propaganda, 
economic warfare and even attempts at invasion, Cuba has refused to renounce its support for the Bolivarian Revolution in Venezuela, Pesuv and Nicolas Maduro. Cuba continues to send medical personnel and, and other assistance to the rest of Latin America, the Caribbean and the rest of the world. I mean, you know, it would take me too long to list all of the countries that have benefited from this solidarity and have a know that they have a friend in the Cuban Revolution. Um, and Cuba acts as a beacon of hope for all of those who struggle against neoliberalism and for economic and social justice in Latin America. And as we've come to learn over the past, uh, over the past couple of decades, it's an inspiring example of the necessity and the power uh, of socialism for grassroots working class activism in Britain. Thanks. Thank you very much, Jacob. And there will be there will be details posted in the chat about how you can get involved with Rock Around the Blockade. And in discussion, we can talk more about the example of Cuba building socialism at the moment. Briefly, we're going to hear something about Ecuador from uh, Robert Witanek um, of the Ecuador 40 campaign, organising around the second round of the presidential elections, I think, that are due in April, and who's going to say something about the... Um, the issues at stake there in a, another really important election for Latin America. I think, Robert, you were ready to speak now, is that right? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm good. Um, I'd like to first uh, uh, tell people how to, how to get involved with the effort. I'm showing you the website, fightbackbetter.com. It's not an organization, it's more of a resource. And there's a link right on the front page, uh, that, that red line there, um, you click on you, you touch on that, click on that, and you go to the information about this effort. Um, we had a meeting of about 60 people a few days ago, uh, mostly Ecuadorian, but uh, folks from around the country and world, um, to form a 40 days of action for Ecuador between March 4th. We added you, even though you started March 3rd, you're, you're listed, um, through um, April 12th, 40 days of action in support of uh, opposition to U.S., Canada, uh, attempts to undermine um, the uh, the likelihood of the Arau's victory, the citizens' revolution, to reclaim the uh, the nation, which is a, will be a major victory for everybody. Um, and um, I, at the link that that's at the site, at the fightbackbetter.com site, there is a form that folks can fill out and add their names to the statement. And what we're asking for is groups to come up with ways that they could participate just like today's event over the next 40 days could be a more virtual events like this. We have some uh, Ecuadorian speakers available. It could be a uh, protest. It would be super if folks in UK were to put together some kind of protest out in front of the U S embassy there during that time. Um, and you can link it up to the other issues. Uh, and of course you have the uh, experience of this situation with Julian Assange, which directly connects your struggle to the people in Ecuador and it was a lot of solidarity between Ecuador, Julian Assange, and, and the UK people when the, the traitor Lenin Moreno allowed the, uh, the sovereignty of Ecuador to be violated and invited the US and, and uh, Britain to raid that embassy. Um, I can read just maybe a paragraph from the statement. I know there's a lot, of, a lot going on today, and I just wanted to say that you guys have put together a super forum. I am very impressed with the, the total, um, every presentation and the massive participation. I am amazed and I am tremendously honored to have been included. Um, the, the state, you could go and read the whole statement, but the main thing I want you to do is if you could see that, that button at the top of the statement, I would like everyone to go to fightback.com, register your support for the statement and start thinking about what kind of actions you guys can maybe put together. Maybe you can reach out to, to other uh, movements around Europe as well to try to connect the rest of Europe to this effort. Um, okay, I'll just read like maybe the first paragraph. Um, on March 4th, the International Coalition of Citizens, Residents, and Organizations from the US, Canada, the UK, Latin America, and other nations are launching their 44 Ecuador, 40 days of action uh, to support democracy in Ecuador, to March 4th for Ecuador. The, the goals of this effort are to ensure that Ecuador's runoff elections on April 11th between frontrunner Andras Arroz, I hope I'm, I know I'm mispronouncing any that, supported by a broad coalition called UNES and, and US-supported pro-business right-wing candidate Guillermo Lasso is conducted without ex 
any external intervention, particularly from the United States or Canada, both of which support the neoliberal candidate and not the people's choice. Okay, uh, the, the rest of the statement goes on and so forth. I don't think I have to read the rest of it. Um, main thing though, please go to fightback, fightbackbetter.com and please click this link right toward the top. Click that button, and register your support. And, and if you have an idea now, you can put it in. You can say, we're gonna plan something. We've got to figure it out. And then you can come back later once you have a plan. We're gonna maintain a huge calendar of all the events, hopefully throughout the world, throughout the US, et cetera. Uh, and this could possibly provide a blueprint for, for future collaboration uh, between forces from all our different countries. I'm from uh, New Jersey and the United States. If you go into that, uh, the link, you could also see we were out in front of uh, the senators Menendez and, and Booker, who were two warmongers in New Jersey, and I'm denouncing their policy toward Ecuador in the video. And that's an idea of the kind of struggle that we can continue forward throughout the planet. All right. I greatly appreciate this opportunity, honored, and I am tremendously impressed by your high level organization and, and uh, the quality of your speakers and the, the tremendous turnout they have for today's event. Thank you. Is that fast enough? That was absolutely great. And I think, you know, we want lots of practical actions and I'm sure we will be discussing what we can organize in solidarity with the progressive forces in Ecuador and against imperialist intervention, which ought to have brought us really neatly onto talking about Bolivia and the attempts of imperialism to undermine um, the, the democratic mandate of Mass and um, Evo Morales in 2019 and the extraordinary organized fight back that came from the working class and the, the poor and the indigenous that managed to push back on that. But unfortunately, Oli Vargas of Calcetin News, who was meant to be with us and who people should definitely follow on social media because it is a, a day by day, blow by blow account of what is going on um, in terms of organizing for socialism in Bolivia. Unfortunately, well, fortunately for him, he's on a campaign rally because of course there are municipal elections coming up in Bolivia. His connection, we've, we've been, we keep trying to get hold of him. His connection is too unstable and he isn't going to be able to give his speech as planned in this meeting, which is a huge disappointment. And we hope very much to be able to reschedule in the future that, um, that, we, that we can hear from him because really extraordinary developments in Bolivia. However, given that we, we are going to move on and in a moment we're going to be taking questions, some of them are being sent to me and I say keep them sending them to Patrick, who's the person who will be fielding your questions just before um, we do that. And I want to thank all our speakers so much because I think that was an extraordinary range of experience, of inspiration, of politics um, that gives us hope, you know, in miserable Britain for the fight back here. I'm going to take a very short contribution really linked to that from Candice, who's going to talk a little bit more about um, the RCG and FRFI. Candice, and then we'll see a short video and then we will have discussion. Hi, I'm Candice from the Revolutionary Communist Group in Nottingham, and I want to add about how you can make a difference. Famously, Rosa Luxemburg is quoted saying, it is socialism or it is barbarism, and never has that been truer than today. Across Latin America, we see people understanding this, from the extraordinary resistance of the blockade in Cuba to the victory for MAS in Bolivia, people are rising. We in Britain must play our role too. We often hear about how the US subverts revolutionary movements with sabotage and sanction, but oft forgotten is the British state's role. For example, the Bank of England has stolen Venezuelan gold and is withholding it from the President Maduro in a plain-faced move against socialism and in support of US puppet Guaido. Britain offers no aid to sanctioned countries and works within the Five Eyes Imperialist Alliance to destroy revolutionary democracy and advance the imperialist plunder practiced both by the British state and by British company. The brain drain that started the Windrush scandal is yet another example of British destruction of Latin America and, and the Caribbean. And our government is always ready to aid the US for its own imperialist drive to accumulate, accumulate capital. We in the RCG have been working hard in solidarity with Latin America, hence why we called this public meeting. We do many educationals across, the, across Britain, but just as importantly, we practice practical solidarity. We send brigades to Cuba to learn what it's like to live in a country striving to build socialism. 
On these brigades, we bring material aid in a political act to break the blockade. For example, we brought instruments and sports equipment to Cuba on their request, as it is difficult for the nation to allocate scarce resources to producing them due to the US blockade. On return from these brigades, we host meetings across the country to hold up the banner of Cuban socialism and show people it show people in Britain that a better, more logical and humane society is possible if we are willing to organize and fight for it. A common anecdote from these brigades goes as follows. I asked a Cuban what's the best thing we in Britain can do to support you and they responded with fight for socialism. We set up rock around the blockade in to offer politi political solidarity to the struggle for socialism in Latin America. We have held protests outside the BBC and The Guardian in protest of their attacks on revolutionary movements in Latin America and laying the groundwork for, for imperialist intervention. We have protested outside the US embassy demanding the end to the genocidal blockade on Cuba. In regards to Venezuela, we held a large demonstration this summer outside the Bank of England to protest the court's decision not to return their gold. We protested outside, outside of parliament against the coup in Bolivia and joined street events in solidarity with the Chilean uprising. In our newspaper, Fight Racism, Fight Imperialism, which you absolutely should get a subscription to, we write about the struggles around the world, including Latin America. And in this edition alone, we have written about Cuba, Honduras, and other so-called banana republics. We fight to raise awareness to the revolutionary movements across the world, and we hold protests and large resistances to the British state and its complicity. We have proof that socialism works in the example of socialist Cuba, and we have to fight not only to defend the revolutionary movements around the world, but to show people in Britain that socialism is the only solution. Socialist Cuba, under the direction of the Cuban Communist Party, has one of the best responses to the pandemic. It has helped countless countries build healthcare systems. It is the world's only ecologically sustainable country. It builds ho ho homes for the homeless and feeds everyone within its border. We have to strive for a better society and a better world which prioritizes people and the planet. A world which provides for the whole of humanity. A world that looks more like Cuba, a socialist world. Along with our newspaper, we also educate by publishing books and pamphlets about socialism. And we have recently produced a pamphlet about socialist Cuba, which you can find on our website. If you're here, you're clearly interested in revolutionary Latin America. And I hope you can see the need for resistance to British imperialism and British capitalism as a whole. And as such, I urge you to contact us and get involved. Read Fight Racism, Fight Imperialism to stay informed and join us to organize and agitate to make a difference. We need to take the example of socialist Cuba and revolutionary resistance across Latin America onto the streets of Britain to inspire people to fight back against the racism, poverty, environmental destruction, and the brutality of the capitalist system we endure today. Together, we are so much stronger and we stand a real chance at smashing the state. Everybody here today has to get organized with the RCG because it is the duty of all of us here, not just to attend meetings and to discuss these issues, but to take the struggle onto the streets and fight for a truly revolutionary movement and lay the groundwork for a so socialist society. You can buy our books, leaflets, and newspaper and contact us at our website, revolutionarycommunist.org. Thank you very much, Candice. We're going to show a very short um, video to inspire you. Um, about our solidarity work with Cuba and way to, give, to encourage everybody to get involved in some way or another in practical activity in solidarity with socialism. And also um, Sam is going to post a link about Cubanos in, from Cubanos in UCA about how you can also help support efforts that are being stymied by sanctions uh, to support the medical efforts in Cuba at the moment. And she'll be posting that in the chat. Uh, Anthony, can you play our little short video and then I'll start taking some questions. Cuba, sí. Yes, he go. Cuba, sí. Yes, he go. Cuba, sí. Yes, he go. We call this event today because we are clear that Cuba is important to us here in Britain because it stands to show that it is only by building socialism and it is only by adopting communist ideology and principles that we can fight back against the barbarity of the capitalist system 
and Britain has played an active role in trying to destroy the example that socialist Cuba sets to the rest of the world, that socialism is possible, that a more logical and just society is possible. While Cuba has had 9,182 infections and 136 deaths during this whole crisis, this country, under the corrupt government of Boris Johnson, has had 1,800,000 infections and how many deaths? More than 63,000. That's the reality of capitalism in this country and that's why we support Cuba because Cuba, yes, shows that another world is possible and even in an underdeveloped country in the Caribbean blockaded by the United States of America it manages to show what a different social system called socialism can create. In Cuba, they have specialist schools for children who have an aptitude in music. As part of a solidarity brigade to Cuba in 2019 with Rock Around the Blockade, I got to visit one of these schools. We were able to donate a thousand pounds worth of musical instrument parts in an effort to break the blockade. Cuban socialism cherishes and nurtures the arts and culture. When the US speaks of democracy, what they mean is the dictatorship of US capital, the dictatorship of US imperialism. In November 2018, Cuban doctors on their international mission in Brazil were ordered to withdraw from the country because Bolsonaro had declared that the Cuban medics were terrorists. They have sent thousands, over 3,600 medical personnel to over, I think it's 30 or 40 countries around the world. They've been sending these people to help the countries that have been struck the hardest by this pandemic. As communists, it's our duty to, using the example of Cuba, show the working class that another world is possible. This is why we must stand in solidarity with socialist Cuba. Imagine what it would mean, not just for the people of Cuba, but for the oppressed people of the world, if Britain, the oldest imperialist country, had its own working class awakening. Join us in fighting to build the better world that Cuba shows is possible. Viva Cuba! Viva! Cuba si! Cuba si! Hands of Cuba! Hands of Cuba! Hands of Cuba!